Johnson, VP of Engineering here at GitHub. And my job is to enable this rich, interconnected community of builders and makers to build even more and hopefully have a great time doing it. In order to enable the best platform for developers, which I know is something we are all passionate about, we need to partner across the ecosystem to ensure that developers can have a great experience across GitHub and all the tools that they wanna use, no matter what they are. My team works to build the tools and relationships to make that possible. I am so excited to join Scott on this virtual stage to talk about increasing developer velocity. So let's dive in. Now, I know this may be hard for some of you to believe, but as a former sysadmin some 21 years ago, working on SunSpark workstations, we've come such a long way from random scripts and desperate systems that we've stitched together to this whole inclusive developer workflow experience. Being a sysadmin then, you were just one piece of the siloed experience, but I didn't wanna just push code to production. So I created scripts that did it for me. I taught myself how to code. I was the model lazy sysadmin that got dangerous. And having pushed a little too far, I realized that working in production and building features was really a team sport, that we had the opportunity, all of us, to be customer obsessed. Today, as developers, we can go beyond the traditional DevOps mindset. We can really focus on adding value to the customer experience by ensuring that we have work that contributes to increasing uptime via SLAs and SLOs, all while being agile and productive. We get there when we move from a pass the baton system to now having an interconnected developer workflow that increases velocity in every part of the cycle. We get to work better and smarter and honestly, in a way that is so much more enjoyable because we automate away all the mundane and manual and boring tasks. So we get to focus on what really matters, shipping the things that humans get to use and love. Docker has been a big part of enabling this transformation. 10, 20 years ago, we had Tomcat containers, which are not Docker containers. And for y'all hearing this the first time, go Google it. But that was the way we built our applications. We had to segment them on the server and give them resources. Today, we have Docker containers, these little mini OSs and Docker images. You can do it multiple times in an orchestrated manner. With the power of actions enabled in Docker, it's just so incredible what you can do. And by the way, I'm showing you actions in Docker, which I hope you use because both are great and free for open source. But the key takeaway is really the workflow and the automation, which you certainly can do with other tools. Okay, I'm gonna show you just how easy this is because believe me, if this is something I can learn and do, anybody out there can. And in this demo, I'll show you about the basic components needed to create and use a package Docker container actions. And like I said, you won't believe how awesome the combination of Docker and actions is because you can enable your workflow to do no matter what you're trying to do. In this super baby example, where it's so small, you can take like 10 seconds like I am here, creating an action due to a simple task like pushing a message to your logs. And the cool thing is you can use it on any GitHub event. On this one, like I said, we're gonna use push. You can do it even to order a pizza every time you roll into production if you wanted. And at GitHub, that'd be a lot of pizzas. And the funny thing is I, somebody out there has actually tried this and written that action. If you haven't used Docker and Actions together, check out the docs on either GitHub or Docker to get you started. And a huge shout out to all those doc writers out there. I built this demo today using those instructions. And if I can do it, I know you can too. But enough yapping, let's get started. To save some time, and since a lot of us are Docker and GitHub nerds, I've already created a repo with a Docker file. So we're gonna skip that step. Next, I'm going to create an Actions YAML file. Psst. And if you know YAML, you know Actions. The metadata defines my important log stuff to capture and the input. And my time output parameter to pass inputs to the Docker container. GitHub will build an image from your Docker file and run the commands in a new container using this image. The cool thing is, is you can use any Docker image in any language for your actions. It doesn't matter if it's Go or whatever. In today's, I'm gonna use a shell script and an input variable to print my important log stuff to file. And like I said, you know me, I love me some shell. 
So let's see this action in a workflow. When an action is in a private repo like the one I'm demonstrating today, the action can only be used in workflows in the same repository. But public actions can be used by workflows in any repository. So unfortunately, you won't get access to this super awesome action, but don't worry. In the GitHub Marketplace, there are over 8,000 actions available, especially the most important one, that pizza action. So go try it out. Now you can do this in a couple of ways, whether you're doing it in your preferred IDE or for today's demo, I'm just gonna use the GUI. I'm gonna navigate to my actions tab as I've done here. And I'm going to, in my workflow, select new workflow. It automatically loads some workflows declared to get you started. But I'm using the one I copied, like I said, the lazy developer I am, and I'm going to replace this. With my action. That's it. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna start our commit. What up? We're fine. And we're gonna commit a new file. Now, if we go over to our actions tab, we can see the workflow in progress. In my repository, I just click the actions tab and because I wrote the actions on push, we can watch the visualization under jobs and click the job to see the important stuff we're logging in the input stamp in the printed log. And we'll just wait for this to run. Hello, Mona, what up, Mona? And boom, just like that, it runs automatically. Within our action, we told it to go run as soon as the file is updated because we're doing it on push merge. That's right, folks. In just a few minutes, I built an action that writes an entry to a log file every time I push. So I don't have to do it manually. In essence, with automation, you can be kind to your future self and save time and effort to focus on what really matters. Imagine what I could do with even a little more time, probably order all y'all pizzas. That is the power of the interconnected workflow. And it's amazing. And I hope you all go try it out. But why do we care about all of that? Just like in the demo, I took a manual task, which both take which both takes time and it's easy to forget and I automated it so I don't have to think about it. And it's executed every time consistently. That means less time for me to worry about my human errors and mistakes and more time to focus on actually building the cool stuff that people want. Obviously, automation increases developer productivity. But what is even more important to me is the developer happiness. Tools like VS Code, Actions, Docker, Heroku, and many others reduce manual work, which allows us to focus on building things that are awesome and to get into that wonderful state that we call flow. According to research by UC Irvine and Humboldt University in Germany, it takes an average of 23 minutes to enter optimal creative state, or what we call the flow, or just to re-enter it after a distraction like your dog on your office door. So staying in flow is so critical to developer productivity. And as a developer, it just feels good to be cranking away at something with deep focus. I certainly know that I love that feeling. The intuitive collaboration and automation features we built into GitHub help developers stay in flow, allowing you and your team to do so much more. To bring the benefits of automation into perspective, in our annual Optiverse report by Dr. Nicole Forsgren, one of my buddies here at GitHub, took a look at a developer productivity in this historic year. You know what we found? We found that public GitHub repositories that use automation on pull requests merge those pull requests 1.2 times faster. And the number of pulled merged pull requests increased by 1.3 times. That is 34% more pull requests merged. In other words, automation can, can, can dramatically increase both the speed and quantity of work completed. In any role, just like in open source development, you'll work more efficiently with greater impact when you invest the bulk of your time in the work that adds the most value and eliminate or outsource the rest because you don't need to do it, make the machines. By, by leveraging automation in their workflows, teams minimize manual work and reclaim that time for innovation and maintain that state of flow. 
with development and collaboration. More importantly, their work is more enjoyable because they're not wasting the time doing the things that the machines or robots can do for them. And remember what I said at the beginning, many of us want to be efficient, heck, even lazy. So why would I spend my time doing something I can automate? Now, you can read more about this research behind, the, behind this at octaverse.github.com, which also includes a lot of other cool info about the open source ecosystem and how it's evolving. Speaking of the open source ecosystem, we at GitHub are so honored to be the home of more than 65 million developers who build software together from everywhere across the globe. Today, we're seeing software development taking shape as the world's largest team sport, where development teams collaborate, build, and ship products. It's no longer a solo effort like it was for me. You don't have to take my word for it. Check out this globe. This globe shows real data. Every speck of light you see here represents a contribution to an open source project somewhere on earth. These arcs reach across continents, cultures, and other divides. It's distributed collaboration at its finest. 20 years ago, we had no concept of DevOps, SecOps, and Lops, or the new ops that are gonna be happening. But today's development and ops teams are connected like ever before. This is only going to continue to evolve at a rapid pace, especially as we continue to empower the next 100 million developers. Automation helps us focus on what's important and to greatly accelerate innovation. Just this past year, we saw some of the most groundbreaking technological advancements and achievements, I'll say ever, including critical COVID-19 vaccine trials, as well as the first powered flight on Mars this past month. These breakthroughs were only possible because of the interconnected, collaborative, open source communities on GitHub and the amazing tools and workflows that empower us all to create and innovate. Let's continue building, integrating, and automating so we collectively can give developers the experience they deserve. All of the automation and beautiful UIs that we can muster so they can continue to build the things that truly do change the world. Thank you again for having me today, Dr. Khan. It has been a pleasure to be here with all you nerds.